In this video I'd like to show some uh, common vector data types. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to do here, I've got a new map in ArcGIS Pro that I made just for demonstration purposes and uh, I'm going to choose to view the catalog pane. Uh, that goes over here and looks at uh, the different folders on my file system and uh, I have added a connection to this folder C data where I put a lot of my data um, if you don't see your data folder there, you can right click and add the folder connection there. Um, I've got tons of folders in here. I use this for a lot of stuff. Uh, so I'm just going to go down here to a folder that I made called Philly Health uh, that has a number of files in it. So uh, the first one I'd like to show is this green type of file. Uh, this is called a shape file. Uh, Esri shape file is about the most common uh, vector data format out there. It's a format that Esri has published the specification for openly, so all software developers, whether they're uh, for for-profit software companies or free and open source software companies, can develop uh, shapefiles and software that works with shapefiles. So it's become uh, a very popular format. Um, so this is evacuation routes in Philadelphia. We can drag this over in the map and add it to see what it looks like. So these yellow lines represent those evacuation routes. Um, this just appears as one file here. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the ArcGIS Pro software sees the shape file and is able to display it. Actually though, if we look on the operating system, this shape file consists of many different files that work together. Also when I add it to ArcGIS Pro, we see these lock files, which would prevent me from working with this shape file in other programs at the same time. Uh, there could be issues if somebody else was editing this shape file at the same time I was. So a lot of times you'll see these lock files Sometimes if your software crashes, uh, you need to make sure that these go away. Uh, if not, you can highlight them and try to delete them with the delete key if you want to play hardball a little bit. Try and get rid of those lock files, make sure they're not hanging around causing problems. Um, a more modern type of data storage format that Esri created is called the File Geodatabase. Uh, this gets around some of the limitations of shapefiles. Uh, as you work more and more with GIS data, you'll find out what some of those are. Uh, sometimes we're limited with shapefiles of how much information we can store in a particular column name or a field. Um, and so file geodatabases are newer technology, but the specification is not as open. So it tends to be just Esri products that work with these. Um, Esri, however, will push you to use file geodatabases. They want people to use that format. Uh, I've got a file geodatabase here with a point data set. Uh, a data set in here is called a feature class in Esri terms. So I've got this point feature class uh, that I'm going to put here of building demolitions. Uh, it's showing up in green, which is kind of hard to see. Uh, let's make those red or orange. There we go. Um, so I've got these demolition points that are showing up. Now sometimes in Esri documentation, when you see the term feature class, it uh, can also be referring to a shape file, which can be confusing uh, because a lot of these have very similar properties. But they do appear different in this catalog window. Now if I went back to Windows Explorer and try and look at this file geodatabase, what I see is actually a folder here. And if you bust into this, uh, there's a lot of stuff that's hard to understand. Uh, you can't see the data itself and it's kind of like a black box. So Esri software can work with it, um, but we can't monkey around with it here and, and try to modify it. Uh, then we have some simpler formats that are um, a little more openly documented and easier to wrap our head around. One of them is KML, so you'll see that here. I've got a, a HIV treatment center's KML file. I can drag and drop this onto the map and there they are. The other cool thing about this, um, KML is actually the file format that was uh, developed for use with Google Earth originally and later it was made an open specification. So if you double click this, by default usually a KML file will open inside of Google Earth and uh, it will zoom you straight to there. And sometimes uh, Google Earth will be able to do uh, some things with KML that you can't do in other programs. Um, so we can see these little push pins here, maybe click those and get some more attributes on them. Now if you open a KML file in a uh, program like Notepad, uh, you can see that it's actually just clear text behind it. So this is uh, not formatted very nicely right now, but this is just in a, a format called XML, and I could actually modify this in Notepad if I was very careful and didn't break the file. Um, I could modify attributes and locations and things like that. And if you look closely, you'll even see the geographic coordinates here, uh, which you can modify if you needed to move the feature. 
Uh, a final way to store data, which is probably maybe what we should have started with, it's the most intuitive, is in a spreadsheet. So I've got this spreadsheet here. This is stored in a format called uh, comma separated value. Let me open this in Notepad first. This just looks like a whole soup full of data, but it's very, very structured. So the first line here is the names of my attribute columns. Notice I have an X and a Y. That's storing longitude and latitude coordinates. And then I've got all these other coordinates uh, for attribute data, like facility name. Uh, this is places where you can get flu shots in Philadelphia. I've got the address, zip code, phone. And then on each line, I have a new location uh, with all this data in the order that's specified here in the header. So if I were to open this in a program like Microsoft Excel, um, Excel would be able to read this format and just boom, put it right in the spreadsheet. And uh, what would be really cool is if I can map this out and just map these latitude and longitude coordinates and then work with the rest of this as if it were an attribute table. So you can actually do that. Um, you can drag and drop a CSV into ArcGIS Pro just like this other data. Here it is down here at the bottom. Um, so it showed up here in the standalone table section and we don't see this data immediately. So uh, adding CSVs is not a one-step process here. What we have to do is right-click it. Um, now if we wanted to we could open it here and we could see the data. So the table loads, um, but it doesn't draw on the map uh, automatically. What you've got to do is tell the software which fields are holding the, the longitude and latitude information. So to do that you can right-click and say display XY data. Well, what this will do, we'll run a little tool where you can match up the X field and the Y field. It just guessed for us, a uh, pretty educated guess, uh, guessing that the X field is going to be the one named X and the Y field is the one named Y. Um, if we run this, we should now uh, see these pop up on the map. Let me turn some of the other stuff off. Okay, these are the locations where we could get flu shots. And if we wanted to export this to a shapefile, we could right click and uh, go down and export the features.